All right, so good morning, good morning everyone, and uh, welcome to our service this second Sunday after Trinity. And so welcome, and um, it's a beautiful day today, and um, trust that you are well this morning. We pray for God's grace upon you and upon our time together. So. Um, uh, Glenis is going to lead the first part of our service, but uh, before she comes, let's, uh, let's just have a moment of quiet and pray. Lord God, you call us to come into your presence to seek your face. You promise that all those who seek you will find. And so now we come at this time to seek you, to worship you, to adore your precious name. And so Lord, we pray that you will quiet our hearts from all the clamor, all the noise of the world and indeed in our own lives so that we will give our undivided attention to you at this time and in this space. Bless our proceedings, we pray, and let your Holy Spirit empower us, inspire us, and ignite us in our worship and our fellowship. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless. Good morning, everyone. We begin with our prayer of preparation, and we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The psalm this morning is Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Saviour. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We'll sing our first song, Hallelujah, Sing to Jesus, number 153.
will sit for our confession. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of God's love revealed in word and sacrament, let us call to mind our sins and seek God's forgiveness and pardon. And we'll just have a moment of silence to bring before God anything we have on our hearts this morning. We say together, Merciful God, we do not come to your table trusting in our own goodness and virtue. We come because we are sinful and need your forgiveness. We come because we are hungry for life and need to be fed. We come because we are broken and need to be made whole. We come because Christ has invited us sinners. We come in gratitude and wonder to offer our very selves to you in worship and adoration. Father, forgive us and feed us. Father, accept our praise and pardon our sins. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now sing our next song, At the Cross, At the Cross. <coughs>
And we will now have our reading. Our reading, first reading this morning, is taken from the First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter eleven, beginning at verse seventeen. On, I praise you. Sorry. In the following direct directives, I have no praise for you, for your meetings do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you, and to some extent, I believe it. No doubt there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. So then, when you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper you eat, for when you are eating, Some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter, for I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, He took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, Whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without designing the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and ill, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if, if you were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we will not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, When we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, you should all eat together. Anyone who is hungry should eat something at home so that when you meet together, it may not result in judgment. And when I come, I will give further instructions. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Grace. Let me say, I'll call it, let me say this together. Lord, You have taught us that all our doings without love 
are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our next song is number 278, I Will Sing the Wondrous Story. remain standing for the gospel. Hear the gospel of God, of Christ, according to John. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this 
is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but will raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. At this, the Jews there began to grumble about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to the Father unless he draws him, and the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. This is the Gospel of Christ. Father, before we, before I speak, let's um, let's pray for our children as they go. Our Father, we give you thanks for the children, the young people that you have uh, blessed us with in this community. We pray for them now. We ask for your special grace upon them as they go to learn the the truths of your gospel. We pray that you'll open their minds and hearts to understand and receive. We pray for their teachers, that you'll give them wisdom and patience. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. 
Okay, so let's, let's pray for God's blessing on his word. Our Father, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light for our path. And so we pray that as we come now to reflect, to meditate on the words that we have heard this morning, we pray that my words will be your words to all our hearts today. And we ask, Lord, that you will feed us with this word of truth we ask. In Jesus' name, Amen. Right, there are those two readings that we heard earlier. I, I couldn't help but smiling when, when St. Paul said, um, don't you have homes to live in, to, 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 to eat in? <laughs> Why are you coming to church and eating up all of the food and, uh, and, and not leaving any for anybody else? <laughs> Sounds like something I would say. <laughs> all right, but that, that's not my focus, strangely. Um, it's that, um, but it's part of it, of course. Um, last week, I, I, well, last week was, Corpus Christi Sunday, and I didn't talk about Corpus Christi as such because I wanted to focus on the, the reading from Revelation that we were doing. But one of the things I have noticed in preaching through the seven churches in the book of Revelation is that as I am going through these, um, these churches, Jesus promised certain reward for every church. We don't look at the rewards because we don't have the time as such to analyze that in our preaching time. But as I was reflecting on those rewards, um, I, I was reading up on them and most of the commentators that I read, they, they say that those rewards that Jesus promised to each of the seven churches um, actually were symbolic representation of himself. Of himself. And so Jesus promised to each of these churches who overcome him. <laughs> so for example, to the church in Ephesus, the promise is to eat from the tree of life. To the church in Smyrna, the promise is to be rescued from the second death. To the church in Pergamon, the promise is to be given the hidden manna which we heard about already. The white stone, the new name to the church in Thyatira, the promise is to rule the nations and be given the morning star. So all of these promises reflect something of the life of our Lord himself. In other words, Jesus promised that those who conquer, those who endure to the end, those who overcome trials and tribulations will be given more of him. More of him. They will experience Jesus in new and extraordinary ways. So Jesus himself is our eternal reward for following him. He is the beginning and the ending of our life. He's the Alpha, the Omega, we are, we are told at the beginning of Revelation. He is the initiator of our faith and he is the reward of our faith. And so, this morning, I want to focus on Jesus, <laughs> as if we don't do it all the time. But I want to specifically go to talk about him as our reward, as our, um, as we've heard in the reading from John, our food, and indeed our life. So I want us to look closely at how, how Jesus describes himself as the need for us. Oh, the one that we need. He, and so this, that's what I said, this incorporates, of course, the Corpus Christi teaching on the Lord's Supper. And so, let's begin in the Gospel. The Gospel of John, Jesus had a long conversation that you heard uh, Janetta read. And, of course, that's, the conversation was happening before, where we pick up the story do read John chapter 6. It's one of the longest chapters in John's Gospel. And it's that 
dispute, that conversation that Jesus was having with some of the religious people in his day about what bread is. <laughs> what does it mean to eat? And so here he told the, these people that he's talking to that the manna that God gave to Moses and the children of Israel in the wilderness was a symbolic representation of himself. The manna was a temporary help. But the real food, he says, is him, his body, his life. So Jesus is the manna, but the manna was only a foretaste of the real food which is fulfilled. The incarnation is coming. So in a sense, they had a foretaste of Jesus but it wasn't the real thing because as Jesus said, they ate the man and they died. But those who eat me will never die. You see, he is the bread, he says, that came down from heaven. Remember, manna came down. Um, they get up in the morning and they found it there. He is the food that we need. Jesus is the manna that has come down from heaven. The one to sustain us. He said he's the bread. Now, bread, of course, is a basic staple of life in almost every culture. Uh, Jesus is saying that he is the basic thing that we need to sustain us for life, uh, for our lives. He is what we need as our sustenance to give us life. So usually we attribute the bread and with the Eucharist, of course, and we're going to talk a bit about that this morning. The bread and the wine that we partake of. And, uh, and it's right that we do this. When we partake of this food, like the manna, we are symbolically eating Christ into our lives. This food, this food is the bread and the wine. And so we are doing, we are doing what Jesus said they did in the Old Testament. That is, they partake of the food that represented Christ. But we do this by faith. By faith we understand that the bread is the body and the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ. And by faith we understand that the wine is his blood shed for us upon the cross. So when we eat the bread, we are eating his flesh. When we drink the wine, we are drinking his blood. His flesh, Jesus says, is real food. And his blood is real drink. He is really present in the bread and the wine, spiritually. It's called, it's called the spiritual presence of our Lord. He is spiritually present, but really present in the food that we partake of. So we call these things mysteries because we cannot fully understand or explain how it works, you see. Um, the mystery of the Eucharist is that when we partake of the bread and the wine by faith in Christ, we are partaking of Christ himself. It's the mystery of this. You know, in the, uh, I've, I've said this here a number of times. In the early church, one of the accusations, one of the accusations that the Romans um, ch um, brought against the Christians while they were killed is that they were cannibals because they would gather on Sunday morning and eat somebody's flesh and drink his blood. Now, of course, they understood nothing, and I, may I put this to you as well, that there are many out there who don't understand. They may, may I say there are many here who might not understand themselves. But what we do understand is that when we partake of the bread and the wine, the body and blood, we are partaking of Christ by faith. In the upper room, on the night before Jesus died, he instituted the supper. And he gave it to his disciples who represented the, the whole church at the time. And he, he told them, this bread is my body. 
This wine is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. He says, do this as often as you drink it, as you eat it in remembrance of me. In other words, the more we do this, is the more we are commemorating the death of our Lord. The more we partake of this food, is the more we are appropriating the benefits of his death into our lives. The more we eat the bread and drink the wine, the more we experience his forgiveness, his strength, and his grace in our lives. This is why, sisters and brothers, I, I, I counsel and admonish you and implore you to never refrain from taking the bread and the wine. Do not stay away from the body and blood of Christ. It is like staying away from Christ. It's like saying, I don't need Christ. I am self-sufficient in myself. And if that is your attitude, May I just say, you are not a Christian? Because that is my second point this morning. Quite apart from the spiritual food, we need Christ. Christ is represented in the food, but the food is not Christ. It is the spiritual food that Christ provided. And every time you eat and drink of this food, you are appropriating the benefits of Christ. And all that he has done for you and indeed for our world and for eternity. So the Eucharist then culminates in the final banquet that we will all have with our Lord on the great day when he returns. So every time we partake of this food, we are anticipating the fullness of the eternal meal in the kingdom of God. You could say this is the appetizer, then one day we'll have the full main course. And so to stay away from the appetizer is another way of saying, I don't really want the main course. But when we partake of these elements by faith, we are imbibing Christ. However, we must never, as I said, we must never limit partaking of Christ to only this blessed sacrament. To partake of Christ is to, is to receive him into your life by faith. When we eat the bread and drink the wine, we are, we are giving our faith body. We are demonstrating that we have Christ in us. In one sense, we cannot fully eat the bread and drink the wine unless we first have Christ in us. That's the point Paul was making in the first Corinthians 11 text. Only those who already have Christ in their lives by faith who are able to eat and drink these elements by faith. The bread and wine do not save you. Christ saves. These elements are there to sustain that faith and your relationship with Christ, but they are not the beginning of that relationship. So the focus on John 6, the chapter in John 6, is that Jesus Christ is the bread of life. He is the one who we need to sustain us for eternity. As I said, do read John chapter 6. The chapter starts with Jesus feeding the 5,000. And he does this with Five small loaves and two fish, yes? A child's lunch. And the chapter ends with Jesus declaring that he is in fact the bread that came down from heaven. And so what he's saying is that the feeding of the 5,000 is symbolic of Jesus feeding us with himself. Being the food that we need to sustain us. We look at the miracle, we say, what a wonderful miracle. Five little bread and two fish feed food. 5,000. Jesus is saying, don't you see it's me feeding you? This body is for the whole world. I can feed more than 5,000. I can feed a multitude. And so he says, 
Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Now, I said, if you just walk in and you hear that, you think, wait a minute, where am I? <laughs> it's a bit strange that you're talking about eating somebody. But I said, Jesus used the most graphic example or, 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 or teaching to indicate to us that this is what it means to be a Christian. We need to be feeding on him, eating him, imbibing him into our lives. You see, because we are sinful human beings, we are fooled into believing that this life is all there is. And the physical is more real than the spiritual. We are fooled into believing that our life is contained in however many years God has allotted to us in this world. That is a, that is a fool who believes that. The Bible teaches us that life is spiritual and life is eternal. And that if you are to last beyond this physical, temporal, and mortal life, then you need to feed on Christ. Because he is the only one who can give you eternal life. Jesus is the only life giver, the only life sustainer. He is the only one who can bring complete, total healing for the sick, men, broken relationships, broken lives, give hope for the hopeless. Jesus is in fact the hope for the world in spite of the fact that the world doesn't know it. And so in the same way, that these people whom Jesus had this discussion with on that day. People today are deceived by the enemy in thinking that they are self-sufficient and that they do not need Jesus. Only those, Jesus said, who eat my flesh and drink my blood will have eternal life. So, in the first place, we imbibe Christ into our lives when we receive him by faith. To consume Christ, to feast on his flesh, is to receive him by faith through simple belief and confession. In fact, Paul says in Romans 10, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess with your mouth that he's Lord, then you shall be saved. And so in one sense, it is simple Believe and confess. Believe the truth of the gospel in your heart and confess that truth with your lips to anyone who will listen. To your family, your friends, the church, the angels, the, the demons. You confess Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my Lord. And believe the gospel that Jesus Christ died for my sins through his death. We are forgiven, made whole, and have eternal life. Now, if you believe that, then, says Paul, and you confess that with your lips, and you, that becomes a part of you, then, says Paul, you are saved, and you are brought into this life of God. But that's just the beginning. This is the beginning of our lives with Christ. It continues every day when we feast on him, when we eat him. So Paul said, when we come to partake of this food, this food is a symbolic representation of what it means to feast on Christ. The food by itself is not Christ. But when you come by faith because you already have Christ, then you receive more of him every day through this meal. And remember, the reward at the end of our journey is Christ. So we begin with Christ. We are sustained with Christ. And our reward is Christ. And so if you have had too much of Christ, 
then you haven't begin to experience, to taste. The, the psalmist says, taste and see. Taste and know that Christ is real. Paul said, it just briefly before I finish, in the, in the reading from Paul's, from 1 Corinthians 11, Paul said, when we come to partake of the food, we are to examine ourselves to ensure that we are not partaking in an unworthy manner. He says we are to come with reverence, humility, and with an attitude to receive. Uh, that is why we come with open palms, hands outstretched. We're saying, please, may I have some food? We come begging. You know, like the child in Dickens' novel. Please, may I have some more? What's that? that one? Oliver Twist, that's right. May I have some more? That's where we come. We come, Lord Jesus, can I have some, please? You see, we come with begging to receive even the crumbs that fall from the table. Because the smallest morsel received by faith will give us life in Christ and sustain our faith. We come kneeling for those who can kneel because kneeling is a posture of humility and gratitude and reverence. So Paul says, come. When you come, come. Don't stay away. But when you come, examine yourself. Don't just rush and gobble up everything. Come with reverence. Come with humility. And so finally, this final, my final point. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the food that we need to sustain us. Jesus is the only one who can keep us and preserve us for all eternity. Therefore, do you have him? That's, that's the question, isn't it? It's kind of begs the question. Uh, if Jesus is our, is our need, if Jesus is our sustenance, if Jesus is the one we need at the beginning, Throughout and at the end, the question is, do you have him? Do you feed on him? Have you imbibed him? Have you, have you eaten his flesh and drink his blood? I'm not talking about the Eucharist. Yeah, this is to come. Have you initially done this? Have you received him by faith? As St. Paul said, have you believed him in your heart and confessed him with your lips? In all these ways, sisters and brothers, we take Christ into our lives. The Eucharist is a physical representation of all this. When we take the bread and wine by faith, we are taking Christ into our lives. So, come. Come to the table with all your brokenness, all your failures, and receive Christ. Because unless you are self-sufficient and think you can do this on your own, you need Christ. You need him first by faith. You need him second in the food that he offers. Come in humility and poverty and begging come with a heart of gratitude for what Christ has done for you at the cross come receive Christ let him nourish you for the journey of faith until that day comes when we all will join together in a final banquet feast in heaven so come don't Delay. Don't stay back. Don't hesitate to come. But come with humility. Come with gratitude. Come with a sense that I am unworthy to come. Therefore, I just want the crumbs. Because I know the crumbs I am made of. Jesus says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. And whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Do you want to live forever? Then come and feed on Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread, the food that we need to sustain us in our journey of faith as we travel in the wilderness of this world. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will give us the true man of yourself so that we who feed on you will live forever. Lord, may we come at this time by faith, not just to receive the bread and wine on the table, but to receive you into our lives, so that when we leave this place, we will be fully nourished by your blood, by your body, by you. We pray this in your name. Amen. And then we are going to sing. The song I've chosen for us to sing at this point is Just as I am, I come. I want us to, because I want us to focus on the coming. Don't stay back, don't delay. Come to Christ. Now, as I said, you're coming first to Christ, second to the table, but come. Come. Either way, come. Let's stand and sing. This is the modern version of Just As I Am.
Lord Jesus, we come. We come just as we are. We come broken. We come sick and needing healing. We come wounded. We come sinful and needing your pardon. But Lord, however we come, we come. Because only in you will we have life eternal. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we are standing, let us declare our faith in the triune God. We believe and worship one God in Trinity and the Trinity in unity, neither blending their persons nor dividing their essence. For there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Spirit. But the divinity of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit is all one. Their glory equal, their majesty co-eternal. What the Father is, so is the Son, and so is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do take a seat. We are going to be led in our prayers. Response this morning, we will. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, you respond, hear or prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your goodness and mercy, which you have lavished upon us. We thank you for health and strength and life in congregating us here this morning to give you due worship and praise. Father, we come just as we are, knowing that you will welcome us into your presence as we feed on Jesus, flesh and blood, symbolically receiving him into our lives and telling others of this good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious and merciful God, you know the secret thoughts of our hearts. Hear our cries and direct our ways to seek your will as we come before you in prayer. Help us to learn from the example of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Father, for the universal church and her life, for bishops, synods, priests, and deacons. We pray, Almighty Father, that your mercy will be over all their works. Blessing you and praising your great and holy name. Speak truth to all illusion, religions, and every dark spot that's all creation that you made, that they may see your glory in Christ and be led in the path of united truth, peace, and righteousness according to the Holy Scriptures. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, Father, for our local church. We pray to give grace to our bishops, priests, and deacons, and our local leaders here. As sin saviors, guide and prosper our own vicar, Reverend Cornelius and his family, and all leaders in the church that you have established here in Forest Gate. Bless all church wardens, secretary, treasurer, PCC members, dealers, representatives, 
either a children or officer, or Virgil, or Sunday school teachers, and the children they teach, or the youth trainers, officers, and parents. We pray for all who are responsible for the whole management, refreshments, the surroundings, the gardens, and the beautiful flower floral arrangements. Father, all who attend this holy edifice and grant abundance by your grace, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the world and its needs. We pray that you will sustain, comfort, and restore the anxious, the fearful, and those living in isolation at this time. Father, be our protector, be our guide, the triune God, as you taught us to love our neighbor as well as ourselves. We do this knowing that you are the great provider and will bless us in our endeavors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We, loving God, we call to you to live as your people and to walk each day seeking your will, pursuing what is right and showing in our lives your love and your attitude to others. Forgive us that we sometimes fall short of the man, but we are grateful that we have a redeemer who can bring us back on track. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the king and the government. We pray for leaders of government and their families. Give wisdom and guidance to all in authority, central and local government, who lead in offices of education, health, industry, commerce and finance, or services on which our daily life depends. Grant a vision of truth and justice, that by their councils, all races and classes may work together in true brotherhood to continue or even improve our lives in peace, tolerance, and love. In the full knowledge that you will sort everything out at the appointed time. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Lord, give to the world and in Lead your church the spirit of wisdom and godly guidance, that we may discern the times that we live in and proclaim the relevance of this, that we come just as we are in this 21st century to receive of you, to live our lives for you, and to draw others to your great and holy name. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We want to pray for the sick and the bereaved. Gracious God, you are the great physician and you have the power to grant healing to the sick. Through us, in the name of Jesus, we ask you therefore for healing to all who in our church at this time suffer from physical, emotional, or mental distress, and relieve them of all discomfort in Jesus' name as we pray for them. We pray for all on our prayer list that we have with us this morning, and we ask you all that you return them to health, be with them in their suffering, so that they may be able to Focus on you, Lord, their refuge and their strength, and the present help in trouble. Renew our faith in you daily, Father, so that others will be drawn just as they are 
to you and the sacrifice that you made for us. Let the feeling of love, which exceeds knowledge and transforms lives, grant that such knowledge be help and consolation that is required for your comfort, for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. For those who have died, may they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We want to remember the persecuted church and the places in the world where there is fighting and unrest. We pray especially for Russia and Ukraine. We pray for the Holy Land, Jews and Arabs. And in places where food shortages occur and nations war against each other. We pray for the time when all nations will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. We pray for the time when nations will not take up sword or guns or bombs against nation. They will not trade for war anymore. We pray, O oh God, for the day when the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Hasten this day, O oh God, we pray. In Jesus' name. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. I learn all prayer. And we want to take time out to pray for ourselves and your neighbors. A period of silence. We ask, Father God, that you would give us the grace to do your will, that Christ would lead us into ways of truth, that the Holy Spirit would guide us in all we do. So in fear of silence, we offer these prayers. Until we humbly receive Jesus by faith and feed on him in our hearts, live our lives that are pleasing to him. We come just as we are, Father, and leave ourselves in your care and keeping as we journey on a pathway of faith. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Janetta. We are going to have our peace now. We're going to share our peace. So let's stand and share the peace with one another. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from His Son, Jesus Christ, our eternal peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. Let's offer one another sign of God's peace. 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 I forgot to say that while we're doing the peace, you can put your offering in the offering plate at the back. So if you haven't done it yet, just do it now. <laughs> and we do take um, 
contact us as well. So if you don't have cash, there's no escape, just to say. <laughs> So let us pray. Let us pray the offertory prayer at the bottom of page two. Gracious God, for all you have given us, all you will give us, and all you give us here and now, we offer you our thanks and praise. Bless this offering of our money and of ourselves to be used in your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. All right, so we are going to go into our time of communion and receiving the Eucharist. A um, few things, if you would like someone to pray with you during this time, um, we have a prayer team who will be willing to pray with you in the prayer corner, over there at this, in, the, in that corner. And um, to do that during the communion, and of course during that preparation of the table, we are going to say, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me.
you have your service books, uh, it's on page 8, really, but I'll tell you in a moment when we get there. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true vine, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks because at the Last Supper, as he sat at the table with his disciples, he gave us this memorial of his passion to bring us its saving power until the end of time. In this sacrament, you feed your people and strengthen them in holiness so that the human family may come to walk in the light of one faith, in one communion of love. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. The top of page 8. Lord, you are indeed holy, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup of wine. He gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, according to mind, his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing, in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. So as our Savior taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. We say to Jesus' prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Jesus died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. So to prepare our hearts to come to the table, let us say together the prayer of preparation on at the top of page 11. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious love, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. As we say, all are welcome to come to the table. Of course, it's the Lord's table, it's not our table. And so, all those, as I mentioned in my sermon, all those who have received Christ are free to come and receive him tangibly in bread and wine. You may have one or both kind, as we say, you may... You may only want to have the bread and go back, or you may have the bread and the wine. You may also not want to have any for various reasons, and you want to have a blessing instead. So come forward for the blessing. Just keep your hands at your side if you are receiving a blessing. If you are receiving the body of Christ, come with a begging hand. Okay. Thank you. 
that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, we thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, sent your Holy Spirit to dwell in us, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for your people. Help us to live in the power of your Spirit, with our hearts set on our heavenly home in Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, right, so before we go, a few notices. Uh, let's take this one off. So, again, thank you, Comfort. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, listen, it's time and effort. And as we bless the banners and give God thanks for the gift that God gave to, uh, has given to our sister uh, Pat and the team that made the banners, of course, this is all for the glory of God. It's for the, it's for the use of the church, for the use of the, 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 the worship space. And so we thank you for putting in the time, the effort, and indeed the money to get this. It's an offering. It is indeed an offering to the Lord. So thank you, our sister Comfort. And it's good to have different types of cloth on the table. So we will be using them from next week. So you'll see different... All right, so um, visitors. We have one visitor who is really... Uh, well, we say here, uh, Richard, if you come three times, you're not a visitor anymore. So this is your second, <laughs> second time. So it's good to have Richard a um, second time. Um, Richard, as some of you will have remembered from the first time he came, is a member of the CCS course that I teach. Coming to an end now, it's been two years going. It's amazing that two years is almost finished. But um, yes, so Richard is part of that CCS course. Richard is coming from, I wrote it down somewhere, Great Chesterford. Does anybody know where that is? Yes? Oh, oh David knows, of course. David's been you know, all over the world. So David knows where that is. Um, I didn't know, so he said, it's near Saffron Warden. That I know. So, so he said, actually, it is an ancient town. It's an ancient Roman town, like 2,000 years old town. So, you know, maybe he can show us around sometime <laughs> in Great Chesterford. So it's great to have you. He had no problem getting here this morning. Um, the first time he got lost, but he found it this time around. So, so it's great to... To have you, Richard. Uh, um, all right. Are there any other visitors? I didn't see any other visitors, uh, so that's great. Um, welcome all. Just to say what most of us already know, our warden, uh, one of our wardens, um, uh, Noel, hasn't been well this week, and Maxine, both of them. And Noel was in the hospital. He came home last night. But um, um, so do keep Maxine and Noel in your prayers. You do know when they're not here, we do miss them. <laughs> Especially because the, 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 um, the, the contactless thing was still in, the, in there. And <laughs> normally no one takes it out. So thank you, Chris, uh, for that. Um, but yes, it's, it's, it's keep, let's keep them in our prayers this week as we go forward, please. A um, number of other things. Uh, please do read the notices. But the main one is next week. Now, next week is Father's Day, and um, our children and our young people are leading on Father's Day. They're preparing for it now, behind the scenes. So they lead next week's service. But, 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 we are hoping, planning, I, I have looked at the weather, and it doesn't look good, but we do pray. We do have a, a great God, so we can pray. Uh, it doesn't look like we'll have as nice day as today, but... If it's pouring down rain, we'll have it here. If not, we'll have a barbecue and, and a meal in our garden. Bring and share, so the usual bring and share, except in the garden at the rectory. Um, as I said, if it's pouring rain, we'll do it here. But we'll still have the lunch, we'll just do it here. It would be, a, it would be an, um, 
what you call it, uh, it would be a disappointment not to go to the garden, but, um, but either way, we'll still have it. But do pray, do pray, do pray for good weather so we can meet in the garden. All right, also a number of things there, the parish outing, uh, the names are down, so now if you have the money, we can start collecting, so I'm sure Grace will not... Um, will we'll be willing to take the money after the service. Um, here five, St. James here five are coming here this week, so do keep that in your prayers as they come to, um, you know, I always love to welcome the children, as you know, and here five are coming this week. Also, keep in your, in your diary the remembrance service for our sister Sue, who who passed away recently. So we are having that service on the 29th here at two o'clock. Do come out for that and do put that in your diary to support the family of our sister, Sue Fisher, um, who will, um, we will remember then. All right, that's it for the notices. Do look at the others and, uh, oh no, it's not it. I have two, two main things, news items on the notice sheet. For those who have a notice sheet, if you don't have a notice sheet, have a look at somebody next door to you. Um, uh, our Archdeacon, the Venerable Elwin Cockett, is retiring after many years as Archdeacon in West Ham. Um, so th some of you here know Elwin. He's been here in Interregnum and other times. He plays the piano and he preaches and he's quite a, uh, full of lots of talents. And as you know, we have been praying for him. He's been undergoing treatment for cancer, and he's decided to retire. Um, it, it was expected, you know. He's been well, praise the Lord, we want to say that as well. God has heard our prayers, and he's doing very well, and he's back at work, but he's decided that the best thing to do is to, is to retire at this time. So, so Elwin is, is, is no longer, as of September, is retiring. So do read that information. The other bit is somebody we should all know as well, um, Reverend Canon Dr. Chigor Chike. Now Chigor is the, the vicar of Emmanuel Church just down the road and he has been appointed as the next Archdeacon of Lewisham and Greenwich. So again, we thank God for Chigor and Chigor and I were very close together in this community and so I, we do want to pray for Chigor as he goes to Lewisham to be their archdeacon there. So one archdeacon is retiring from us and one person is leaving from us to be an archdeacon somewhere else. Um, so we want to pray for Chigor as he picks up this new role, which means that there will be a vacancy at Emmanuel Church in the coming months and so on and years. So, um, there is, a, there is um, a, an associate minister there, um, a Jenny. So we want to pray for a Jenny because she's going to be on her own. <laughs> Janetta and I are a friend, a Jenny. So she's going to be on her own for a little while. Uh, so we want to pray for a Jenny as she holds the fort, as it were, till somebody is found for a man. So we, let's pray for them. Father, we thank you for these two members of our community for Elwin, and we, we give you thanks for the healing that has happened in his life, and is indeed happening every day, and so we thank you, Lord, for bringing him through the worst of the cancer, and we pray that that healing will continue, and we thank you for his service in this diocese and in this community of West Ham as our archdeacon, and we pray for him as he retires. We pray that you will grant him grace, he and his family, as they move out of this community into retirement later this year. We pray for Chigor and his family as well as they look to move to Lewisham and Greenwich as the archdeacon there. We pray for him and we pray that you will grant him grace as he takes up this new role. And we pray for Ajani and the, the people at Emmanuel that you will be with them during this interregnum period. We ask this. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So, birthdays. Are they? Ah, yes. Yeah. Peter Carriage, yes. Some of you might know 
Peter Carey, Chief Pastor. Yes, 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 thank you. Thank you. Ah, yeah. All right, it, it, it's funny that you stood up, Jenny, because I understand it's your birthday. <laughs> so, Jenny's birthday, when is it, Jenny? Saturday. Saturday coming, yes, Saturday coming. So, Jenny's birthday is on Saturday. Are there any other birthdays this week? Yes, no? Ah. Tracy. It's my birthday on Tuesday and Derek's yesterday. Aye, all right, very close beside each other there. All right, so Tracy and Derek and Jenny. So we are going to sing Happy Birthday to y'all. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday, God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for these children, your children, who are celebrating birthday this week. We pray for your special grace upon them at this special time in their lives. We ask for health and strength for many more birthdays. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to stand and sing of our any anniversary. Any anniversary? Ah, Deborah. Yes? yes? On Wednesday, 12th of June. Wednesday, the 4th of June. Wednesday, 12th of June. When's it coming? How many years? 42 years. 42 years. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's Deborah and John. Deborah and John. 42 years. We don't have a song, but we'll pray for you. And uh, is there any others? That's it? Yeah. So let's pray for Deborah and John. Father, we thank you for the love that you've given us in Jesus, and that love is expressed in our relationship with one another. So we pray for that bond and that un union of love with Deborah and John. We thank you for these many years that you've given them as a couple. We pray for that special grace to abide with them forever. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to stand and sing our final hymn which is guide me, O thou great redeemer. Let's start. to him who is able to keep you from falling 
and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forever. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and with all you love today, this week, and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Have a blessed week, sisters and brothers. Thank you.